Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from uh, Snorkel.tv, where we make the awesome. Okay, uh, today what we're going to do is show you how you can make a sequence of your Flash movie play a set number of times. Uh, maybe you've had a banner that you need to have only loop three times or five times before it stops or goes on to another frame. Uh, let's just take a look at what we're going to be building. And we're going to make sure our Flash is active, and let's test this out. So we have our nice little fishy swimming across the stage. You'll see the number changing in the left-hand corner there. Uh, when it got to three times, it says all done. Um, let's close that out. And my phone stinks, but anyway. One, two, and then on the third time, it stops and we get some sort of great reward. So let's just take a look at how this file is set up. Um, we have in actions, layer where we'll keep all our script. We have a guide that our fish will follow. All right, fish follows the guide. Uh, we have a layer called all done and we also have a frame set up, frame label for all done and that's just our finishing sequence that we have in there. And we have a text layer that has a dynamic text field. Dynamic text can change and once we give that text an instance name we can literally tell that specific text field what text it should display. And that's pretty much all we need. We're going to start this file really simple and just chuck in some action script along the way. We're not going to be giving a huge in-depth breakdown line by line, uh, but I will be showing you what everything means and I will be giving you uh, a zip of all these files so that you can pretty much just copy, paste, steal, hork, whatever you want to call it, all right? Um, what we're doing here, you can easily just slap into anything that you have built. I just switched over to our start movie, and here, everything's built out for you. You know, I'm not going to take 45 minutes showing you how to make a fish swim. Um, so, but we do want to give you some of the bare bones, obviously. And in frame number one, what we've done is I've set up two variables. Now, variables allow us to refer to some sort of value by name. Some people call them containers, whatever. Um, right here, I've said that the count variable is going to be a number and it's equal to zero. Count is going to be used to keep track of how many times our movie has played. We have a second variable called max times to play. Um, that's going to keep track of the total amount of times that this movie should play. Um, max times to play is just the name that I came up with, but I'm telling this variable that it's going to be set to three. And the trick is going to be making sure that our count variable is going to act as a counter and it's going to increment every time our animation plays. And secondly, we need to make sure that um, once we've reached the max times to play that our movie stops or goes to the right place. So let's go to frame number 55. This is where the fish gets all the way across the stage. At this point in time, I can say, all right, you've played once and I can increment the counter every time we get to this frame. So let's go to my actions panel and I'm going to tell the count variable, let's put that on the first line, to increment, meaning one will be added to it. And there's a shorthand annotation for this. I just use plus plus. That tells Flash, hey, take the count variable and add one to it. Just to show you how this works, I'm going to trace out the value of count. And then we're also going to go to and play frame number two. We want to make this movie loop and I want to be able to show you that counter incrementing. I'm going to take my output panel and we're just going to put it right about there. Test my movie. One. You see that? Output opens up and every time we get to frame number 55 that counter gets incremented. I could go out, eat a whole bag of combos, come back and maybe that counter would say 1,057 times this movie has played. It will go on infinitely. So, now that we've gotten it to count, you know, um, maybe we want this text field to populate. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? You have the instance name of count underscore txt. Look, I did that for you. Um, let's make your text change. So on frame number 55, instead of using the trace, <coughs> I'm going to say, Let's tell that text field called count underscore txt to display the text 
So we're going to set the text property equal to the value of count. Now, when I test my movie out, instead of the output panel coming up, oh look, dynamic text field. I can make that text change. So it's going to be counting up instead of the trace. So we now have a nice visual display of what's happening. So we've already played seven times, eight times. Let's go ahead now and put the kibosh on this animation once it has played the max times to play. So back in frame 55, we're going to add something called a conditional statement. And I'm going to say, if this has played the max number of times, then we're going to show the all done sequence, or else we'll go back to the beginning. Now, what we're going to do for this is literally ask the question if. Just like when you wake up in the morning and you might say, if it's raining, then I'll bring an umbrella, or else I'll leave it at home. Well, in Flash, we can create something called a conditional statement that allows us to test some sort of condition and respond to it in a multitude of ways. Um, just like if it's raining, I might bring my umbrella. I can ask this Flash movie, hey, if you're done playing, go to the all done sequence or else keep playing and go back to frame number two. So I'm going to say if count that variable is equal to max times to play, those are my two variables, I'm comparing them here. If that's true, inside these curly brackets, I can put what will happen if that is true. If that's true, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Go to and play the frame labeled all done. All right, in my timeline, we have this frame labeled here, all done, and that's that animation sequence. Back in frame 55, we're saying if those two values are the same, if count is equal to three, then go to and play the end of the movie. If that isn't true, then we want to go back to the beginning. And now we use the else statement. If it is raining, I will bring my umbrella, or else I will leave it at home. If my movie isn't done playing, I will then do something else. What else am I going to do? I'm going to go back to the beginning. So this go to and play to is only going to execute if I'm not done playing. That should be all it takes. One, two, the suspense is killing me, three, all done. I now have a smart movie. It has logic. It has brains. It can rule the world. It will rule your world if you understand this. Um, I can go back to frame one and uh, let's just say that max times to play. Maybe our art director changes his mind, says make it play five times. It's the best fish animation I've ever seen in my life. The world will love this. Um, change that number to five and we have our dynamic text changing. I just put that in there as a visual aid. You don't have to have a text field on stage, but when you're testing, it will help. I get to five and all done. You can totally take this code, copy it, everything I have in frame one, put it into frame one of your movie, everything I have in frame 55, you can put in frame 55 of your movie. Um, literally take these files, tear them apart. I'm going to give you this start file so that you can try to type it in yourself if you really want to get your head around it or else just copy and paste. No big deal. All right, folks, that's it. Happy flashing and uh, really have fun with this. All right, start small, go big. And one last thing, this go to and play two here, why don't you put in the number one and see what happens? It's not going to work so well. All right, there's your challenge for the day. See you guys soon. How do I turn this thing off?